What is up everybody? Chad Ferguson, Catfish Edge. So I just picked up my brand new 2020 Sea Arc Pro Cat 240. Now it looks a lot like the last boat, but it's a darker gray color. A lot of different upgrades and, and features and stuff on this boat that I didn't have on the other one. I will do a full walkthrough of this boat in the future once I get it all rigged out and set up. But today I'm going to walk you through what I do to rig my catfish boats. I get tons of questions about this. I got lots of stuff to get installed today. So I'm going to show you some of the highlights and important parts of what I do when I'm rigging my catfish boats. So I've got uh, my Hummingbird Solix 15 here that I'm going to install on the console balls out sonar mount i've got a fell marine uh, wireless kill switch man overboard switch uh, that eliminates the need to have to use this uh, old school cord attached to you um, i am running the Minn Kota altera with ipilot link so i'll be running a network cable from the altera to the console to hook up to the hummingbird solix have a whole load of Driftmaster rod holders here to put down the accessory rails and then on the cat rack here in the back of the boat. I uh, am going to have to program and get the iPilot up and running, get the remote working and everything, get it networked into the Hummingbird Solix. Have an accessory charging port here to run into the onboard charger. I've got two Minn Kota Talons to install I don't know if I'm going to get those done today. And I'm sure there's some other stuff that I'm forgetting right now. I've got a lot to do. I don't have anybody to help me today. Some of this I really am going to have to have an extra set of hands to get done. So I don't know if I'm going to be able to get everything done today. But I'm going to try to make a good dent in it and try to get this boat lake ready so I can get it out on the water and get it broken in hopefully tomorrow so I can get back to fishing. I'm going to uh, start running my wires for my fish finder installation and I'm going to go ahead and get my uh, external plug for my uh, onboard charger put in. Just uh, a couple simple things, easy to get to and uh, I can get those knocked out pretty quick. I want to do those first before I start putting rod holders anything else like that on because it just adds more items that you have to work around. I'm gonna run my uh, Solix 15 power wire uh, with the extension on it. And I'm gonna pull my transducer out, run my transducer down through there as well. One thing I wanna show you really quick is about this power wire. Now I've covered this in some other videos in the past. I'll put a link down to those but this wire is one of the most important things that you're going to install uh, on catfish boats. So this is the Humminbird uh, Solix 15 power wire. And you can see here, it's pretty short. There's not a whole lot to it. And to run from the console back here to the battery uh, takes a lot more wire than that. So what I've done here is extended that wire. This is 10 gauge anchor uh, marine shielded wire and um, that's what I'm going to use for my power wire extension. If you use wire that is not heavy enough you'll have uh, interference issues with your sonar images and you'll have power cycle problems whenever you go to start the motor uh, the fish finder will shut down. So a couple of important pieces to this you can't see this under this wire here but uh, I've used uh, solder shrink connectors and heat shrink tubing uh, to marry this Hummingbird power wire to the extension wire and then I've got it wrapped in electrical tape there as well. And then down here on the other end I've added my uh, terminals. These are uh, marine uh, crimp and then heat shrink terminal. So I've crimped these on with a ratchet crimper and then I have a uh, solder seal uh, heat shrink connector that goes around this and this has adhesive in it so this has adhesive in it so you put your heat gun on this and it shrinks around the end of the wire and it holds that in place and then this is also crimped on and that is the only crimp that I'll use in this connection and I always use these uh, heat shrink adhesive terminals here 
because uh, they are the only ones I've found that will stay on. I've got my fuse holder here, and then here to wire that fuse holder on, um, I was in a hurry and I was having some issues with my soldering iron um, not wanting to heat up, so I've used these solder shrink connectors. So this actually has a little solder ring here in the middle of it. You basically just insert these two wires in here and heat it up with a heat gun and it will melt that little solder ring and the, the ring will uh, contract around those wires and then this is heat shrink adhesive here so it just literally forms itself around those wires and it'll hold that stuff in place it'll never come loose i like to solder those and use a heat shrink tubing but this is the second best do not use crimps and then again make sure that you use the right gauge wire for the fish finder that you're running and the length of the run. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put these battery terminal extenders here on my battery. And uh, I'm gonna run my fish finder only off of these terminal extenders so that will help eliminate um, any interference issues in a lot of cases and gives you a whole lot more room uh, to work with a lot of times if you're running a bunch of electronics and accessories uh, these terminals here will get really full so I'm going to just put these on there and run the fish finder off of that I've hooked up my Humminbird Fish Finder power wire. And when I run this wire, I'm gonna leave about 18 inches or so, uh, maybe a little bit more, maybe about two feet. At some point, I'll move this around and, and uh, clean this up so the wire is facing the right way, but I just kinda want it out of my way for right now. But I'm gonna leave enough extra wire uh, here in this compartment that if I have any issues with uh, these connectors which is very rare I've never had any problems with them but I'm leaving enough wire that if I were to have any issues uh, I would have plenty of room to work and to fix those connections without um, having to fight with them and those being on a, a real short lead now I've fished my transducer uh, through the back compartment here and then uh, back out of the battery compartment and down this chase to the console. I uh, used my fish tape here. I pulled this uh, access cover off here, used my fish tank, ran my power wire and my transducer wire through here. And the reason I pulled this off is just so I can see inside of there, kind of pull those wires out of the way and so I can really watch because you've got ignition and throttle controls and all kinds of stuff running here in this area. So just wanna be real careful, make sure I don't snag anything and, and try to force it through and pull something loose. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put in my uh, extension port for my onboard charger. I just mount these here in the back deck of the splash well the charger plug plugs into this and then you use this to plug your extension cord in and that just makes it so you don't have to open and close that deck every time you you go to plug it in so now I'm just gonna fish this down through here Now I'm gonna go ahead and, and drill uh, access hole to pull the Humminbird uh, power wire and transducer wire through. And then I'm gonna go ahead and drill my mounting holes for my balls out mount. Um, I've been running this configuration for quite a while now, so I know exactly where I want those. One thing you wanna be real careful of before uh, you drill into anything like this or try to cut any big holes, you just want to kind of feel around the back side of anything that you're drilling into or make sure you look underneath it and um, you know make sure that you're not drilling into any structural supports or uh, wiring or anything else so this is all pretty clean right here 
but right here across the back of this console there's a support beam um, you definitely don't want to drill through that with a big hole saw so I've got this right here so it's way out of the way of um, you know that support beam I was able to get that balls out mount mounted by myself wasn't easy but I crammed my arm as far up this access hole right here as it could go with a ratchet and I was able to reach it by myself from the top and the bottom wasn't fun but I got it done so now I'm going to get a fuse pop a fuse into the fuse holder on my power wire for the hummingbird go ahead and plug the power wire and the transducer in I'm going to make sure that um, I don't have any problems with that um, that way just in the rare chance there's some sort of issue I can get it addressed without having to open everything back up again and, and get back to it so my camera battery died and uh, I went ahead and kept working a little bit and what I've done is run this network cable you can see this black cable here running down in this compartment so that's the network communication cable for the iPilot link that runs from the trolling motor to the fish finder so what I did is uh, just pulled this rub rail off uh, came right through the corner here and went down the inside of the outside portion of this rub rail and ran that network cable all the way down from the trolling motor and then went right in here on the side of the console and um, I have that wire running to the Humber Solix now but I'm going to go ahead and uh, get the balls out mount put together I'm going to get my poly mounted board for my transducer installed on the transom and uh, maybe a couple other things we'll see what happens and then I'm going to give it up for the day I'm sitting on my balls out mount so I just need to get the mount adjusted like I want it and um, tighten everything up and then all that leaves for the fish finder install is to get the transducer mounted and uh, then I should be good to get it out on the water and get it dialed in okay so here is the network cable for iPilot link I've got it fished from the console from the fish finder up here to the nose of the boat and then I've got this from the trolling motor and the transducer cable from the trolling motor that need to be fished down here through the deck so I can connect that I'm gonna hook a fish finder up here on the bow later on so I got to drill a hole up here for that now now there's a brace that runs across the bow right here there's an aluminum beam that runs right underneath this and I don't want to drill into that so I'm gonna come back just a little bit make sure that I can miss that and put a hole right here Try to keep as much of those aluminum shavings out of here as I can, but I'm not doing a very good job with it. So I just cut that little plug in there. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and fish the wires through here, get the network cable hooked up, and then I'm going to come back um, later and put a clamshell over this. I hate making a hole that big, but the end of that transducer cable coming off the trolling motor is so big I tried the next whole side uh, size hole saw down from this which was the smallest hole saw that I had with me uh, I think that I have it all 
and the plug was too big for that size. So, you know, got to do what you got to do. I know a lot of people don't like poking their holes in their boat, but, uh, you know, there's really no way to do this without punching some holes in it. You just got to make sure you do it the right way. So I got that connected. I'm just going to leave this stuff loose right now and uh, I'll come back later on and uh, cable tie that stuff up with zip ties and clean it up, make it look nice and make it where it won't be snagging on everything. But for now, what I want to do turn my trolling motor on here and I'm going to check and see if the Solix recognizes the Altera so I can confirm that my network cable is good. So I'm going to boot up the Solix here and see if it recognizes the trolling motor. Hopefully that's the case. While I'm doing that, I'm going to go ahead and get my remote here for the trolling motor. Uh, so I'm going to get this plugged in and charged in so I can program the iPilot remote uh, to work with the trolling motor. So as you see here, I just got uh, confirmation iPilot connected. Oh, there it is. It's recognized it. So now this is my iPilot controls here. So if I was to, or probably shouldn't do this with it sitting on the trailer. But you can see there, it worked. So I'm controlling all of that uh, from this screen here on the Solix so I can automatically stow and deploy. So now what I got to do is install the uh, uh, jog sensor for the Altera um, Bluetooth sensor, get that installed and get it connected to power. This is the heading sensor, uh, jog sensor for the Altera. So spot lock jog function on the remote. Whenever you spot lock, uh, you hit left, right, forward, backwards, and it moves the boat five feet in any direction. It's a great feature. I use it all the time. You have to have this installed for that to work. And then this has to connect uh, to power. And this will leach power uh, if you're not using your boat. So. When you wire this in, you want to wire it in to uh, something that you can turn off so it's not constantly leaching power. So what I typically do, I like to put this as close to the trolling motor as possible. Uh, I know a lot of people uh, have debated that. That information I got directly from Minn Kota a long time ago. They said mount it as close to you can as you can to the trolling motor. So that's what I've always done. So I'm going to mount this up here on the bow. Uh, right up here kind of in this area and then what I typically do with this on the sea arc is I just jump this power wire into my nav light up here so I'll, I'll come in here on the back side and wire that in so whenever I turn my lights off it kills the power to this and I don't have to worry about uh, it leaching power when the boat is not in use this has got a little mark on it you want that to be centered um, facing forward and you want this um, I like to put this as close to the center line as of the boat as I can get it so that's another reason I like to mount it up here in the front so I'm back again got a really late start today I had some stuff to do with the family this morning but uh, I'm going to jump back on it and try to get things knocked out I am uh, ready to mount my uh, poly mounting board for my transducer. I'm going to get the transducer installed and as level as I can without putting it on the water. 
try to get the rest of the stuff knocked out. So this is 3M5200. You want to put this, uh, anytime you drill a penetration below the water line, you want to put this on uh, screws or, or any through hole fittings or anything like that. And uh, this is a brand new tube of this that I had bought and I had never opened. And uh, for some reason, I guess it must be old or something, the tip of it is all dried up and, and it's all caked uh, and hardened up in the top here. And I can't get it to come out. So in the interest of not having to go back to the hardware store, I'm going to cut this open. Get my knife cleaned off there. My good knife. And uh, I'm just going to squeeze it out this end. That way I don't have to make another trip to the store. And I'm just going to put a big glob of this kind of right over here where these holes are. And uh, I just want enough of this on here. I'm going to kind of push it in here. Spread it around a little bit so it doesn't squirt out the sides. I just want enough of that on there to uh, seal those holes up whenever I um, put this on the transom. This poly mounting board on the transom, I've talked about this a lot in my past videos. But you always want to make sure you put a poly mounting board. Um, that gives you the ability to, to move that transducer around and adjust the installation without having to, to punch new holes in the boat every time. Otherwise, your transom will look like Swiss cheese every time you uh, have to adjust your trans, uh, transducer. And sometimes it may take you a few tries to get that transducer installation exactly where you want it. So having this poly mounting board will help with that. This is especially important with an aluminum boat. If you ever look at any instructions for transducers, you'll see lots of information about there about aluminum and interference. And uh, there's a big, long, drawn-out explanation for it. Long story short, make sure you use a poly mounting board, especially on aluminum boats. I'm going to put this right about there and these are stainless self-tapping machine screws sheet metal screws goes in nice and easy and I'm just kind of feeling here I want to make sure that this board doesn't extend down below the bottom of the transom here anywhere because that will put drag that will actually cause the boat to list if it's sticking down below there. Just double check it again, make sure I'm good. Okay, so I know how most of my pro cats uh, historically will sit in the water. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and do my leveling trick um, the the best that I can here with uh, with what I have to work with and. Um, Wow, the trailer is sitting just about pretty perfect. I got a full video that shows you how to do this. I'll put a link down below. You definitely want to make sure you level transducer to make sure you get the best images. So I'm just using uh, the little iPhone level right here. And um, I'm going to, uh, to um, go ahead and put the level on the transducer. Try to get it as close as I can. Again, when I put it on the water, um, I'll put the level on it again, then I'll be able to see um, once I start marking fish and start seeing those arches. 
be able to see how level that transducer is at this point but i'll go ahead and level it a second time i just want to get it as close as i can for right now yeah and i went ahead and added a, a mounting uh, cable tie right here on this transducer cable I'll come back after I get my transducer leveled and everything and I'll put a couple more on there but for now uh, until I get everything right have the transducer exactly like I wanted I'm just gonna put one of them on there just to kind of hold that cable out of the way and make sure it doesn't get wrapped up in anything this is installed I have the power run to it uh, it's actually powered on right now I turned the switch on light blinked a few times so I'm gonna hit the pair button on here Hold this down for just a few seconds. Now that's flashing. And I'm going to go over here to the Altera. Hit the pair button on this. And now we've got the heading sensor paired to the Minn Kota Altera there. So now my spot lock jog features will function correctly. Now, while I am doing this, because I'm up here on the trolling motor, I'm gonna go ahead now and pair the Altera to my iPhone. Minn Kota has an app that you can use as a remote. I like to have that just in an emergency in case I misplace my, uh, my standard remote or um, battery goes dead, anything like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and pair that now and get that out of the way. Okay. I'm in the home stretch. I had to run to the hardware store, uh, lost a couple of stainless steel bolts somehow in the process of uh, moving my smooth move seats over. So I've added uh, two smooth move seats here to the boat. Uh, I have one here that is the um, electric version. You basically just plug it in and uh, has an air compressor in it just here and then this is the manual version and so what these do is it's like an air ride seat so bouncing up and down here i feel like one of those kids on the bouncy balls in the 70s um, so when you're running across rough water this takes all the the shock out so you're not uh taking that impact of you know hitting waves and the boat bouncing up and down so this one uh, has a little plug here from this seat you just plug it in and there's a little knob down here on the bottom and push it in and it fills the seat up with air you can see the so that's as high as it goes right there you have to adjust these seats based on on your body weight so i'm gonna let some air out of it and uh that's pretty pretty close right there and then this seat right here uh, it basically does the same thing, but uh, this is, is manual adjustment instead of electric um, with the compressor built in. So you basically just turn this knob. You can see there's a little number here. You turn this knob and it adjusts the tension um, of the seat based on uh, the weight of the person riding on it. It doesn't have to be plugged in. This really, this is an awesome seat. I've been using this for quite a while on my boat. Love it. Can't imagine not having it. Uh, I didn't put the electric one on this side uh, because I just didn't want to mess with uh, trying to get the electricity to it. And uh, I wanted to try the, the other version as well. Got a lot of cleanup to do. Get these metal shavings and stuff out of it. I gotta get the Felmarine wireless man overboard switch um, fobs paired with the with the man overboard switch there. Uh, I have to get my rod holders installed up and down the rails. Have to get my rod holders put on the cat rack, and then do some uh, just clean up of my my cabling and whatnot with some cable ties 
that won't take long at all. So I'm getting pretty close to being done, ready to get this baby out on the water and break it in. All right, so I'm ready to put my rod holder bases on the cat rack. Then I'm gonna uh, loosen the cat rack up, move it back some. It's a little further forward than I'd like it to be. And uh, I'm using, I'm not using T-bolts to mount these bases. I'm just using regular bolts. So rotary rasp, I'm just gonna punch a hole right here in the end. Now, hopefully have that opened up enough. I'll have to test it. I am done. Everything is done. All of the rod holders are in, uh, down the gunnels, on the cat rack. You name it, they're all in. I did my cleanup, got the uh, fobs for the wireless kill switch on the console paired. Everything is done, tested, working. All I have to do is get my stuff put in the boat and do a little bit of cleanup with some cabling, put some zip ties on them and uh, just clean them up so I don't have loose wires. I'm gonna do that in the morning, get everything back into the boat, set up so I can go out to fish and then I'm gonna get out on the water and start breaking in the motor. I got a video on that too. I know this is a lot of information but I've had so many questions about this process that I wanted to cover it all. Certainly what you've watched is condensed down um, just the hours and hours that it's taken me, you know, in and out of the boat, grabbing tools, everything else. It's been a big process to do, especially by myself. Usually I've got my son with me. It makes this process go much faster. If you got questions, go down below, leave a comment, let me know. Make sure you hit that thumbs up button like subscribe and hit that bell notification icon and hopefully here in the next couple days i'll have this boat broken in be back on the water and catching some catfish until next time i'm chad ferguson catfishedge.com